Hey guys, so I'm here today for the second part of my video, Tips for First Time Writers. So last time I did all the tips for writing your first novel, and today I'm going to be doing all about plotting your first novel, how I think you should plot your first novel. Now I deeply, deeply wish that I had these when I wrote my first novel. I didn't even have an iPhone to store notes on when I wrote my first book. When I wrote Through Baby's Eyes, I had, oh, I wish I was in Boston so I had it with me. I had my seventh grade, no, I wasn't in seventh grade, I was in fifth grade. I had my fifth grade homeroom binder, which is basically like stuff full of school, so I had like one little piece of paper that wasn't being used. I had a little notebook that big that was a set of snowman on it to keep notes in. And for a phone, I didn't even have a phone to keep notes in. I had a, um, I had a tiny little slide up phone and it was the best thing ever because it was like, it was so cool to have a slide up phone when, I mean, in that, in that day and age, we've since graduated onto new technology and now my two, almost two year old nephew knows how to use a phone. Like how does that even work? But anyway, yeah, I was kind of in like the Neanderthal days without like the iPhones with the notes on your phone and all this but today lucky enough now we are now today we are lucky enough to have that stuff and to have these tricks and I really wish I did have them obviously from all the rambling I've done um being in school I've been in school just about three months now and although it's like not that much time I have learned so much um I'm plotting out my first screenplay right now we start writing it on Thursday I'm pretty sure Thursday and um, I, I'm going to share some of the things that I learned with you guys that I think would be super, super important for writing your first novel. If I had these three of these eyes, maybe would not be in such a train wreck. Um, I mean, the idea is great, or at least I think. It's just like the actual the way I wrote it. So um, I'm going li to list you. List, I'm going to read. That was I'm going to list you. I'm going to list and read you some things that I that you need to have for your first when you're plotting out your first book. I don't. You don't really need this outline for every book. I mean, every book you ever do. I just find it's very important for the first one because structure is like the most important thing for um, a first book. And I, I know I've used this analogy before, but I'm going to use it again. Having a puppy or a baby is um, you are getting it on a schedule. You need structure. How many times is a day are you going to let your book out to go to the bathroom? You need to have structure with your book. So this is actually a school assignment I did. And the printer is like, look at my printing job. Wow. Um, this is actually for my screenplay. So the first thing you need to have is your working title. Um, mine is for my screenplay. It's, it's Me Daddy. It's, and the two, you need to have a log line. And a log line is like three to four sentences describing your um, book. I think maybe I have a page in my trusty school folder of log lines. But this is like... Hmm. This is really smart. I have like four class no how many classes am I taking oh here we go here we go here we go um I'm taking like five classes and I have one notebook it's really smart so anyway um this is a treatment basically what it is um this is a treatment and in your treatment I think it's, it's like I said it's so important for your first book if you don't want to do it after that don't I never did it but now that I have now I'm doing a school I wish I have so the first thing like I said working title and two a log line so a log line is I said the wrong thing so describe what I just said it is a two a short log line a one sentence summary of your script so the second thing in your treatment or your outline my school calls it treatment I call it outline it's the same thing um is a log line I am very bad at writing log lines because I've just started it's something I'm learning so it kind of shows that you can write however many books you do and you can still be really bad and inexperienced at some things um three you write an introduction to key characters very important um this is just for you like no one's gonna see this so it can be as bad as you want it to be um you can see here my key characters are listed right here I have um Fletcher Kendrick and it just says Man who finds baby in woods slash raises her, and then I have Alexandra Kendrick, Lexi, baby, 
Addison Telford, Lexi's mother, so on and so on. Key characters, brief description. If I was writing Hope, I would say main baby, main protagonist, uh, anything. Um, four, it should be who, what, when, why, and where. Meaning, do we have that right here? Yeah, who is the protagonist? Um, when and where does it take place? What is the goal? You should have those listed so you know. Uh, I just realized I just scratched right here and it's all red. That looks good. <sighs> Cover that up. See, I don't have guinea pigs anymore, so I'm not used to... Well, maybe that. I do have guinea pigs, but I don't have guinea pigs living with me anymore. They're all in Boston, so I'm not used to having little scratches. But wait three weeks when I'm home, or wait two weeks when I'm home, they'll all be there. Um, why? Why is the goal, and where is it? Um, five. Act one. Act one should be one to two, one to three paragraphs. Set the scene. Dramatize the main conflicts. So this is Act one in my crappy printing job. This is Act one. So it's right there, and this is everything, and it goes into here. And that's just everything listed, and um, I had to do this in one night, but obviously if you're writing a book, there's no deadline. So you can just basically write down what you want to happen. You can just take whatever time you want. Even the smallest thing, like a little one sentence. Hey! It's, sorry, I'm like recording the Santa Claus 2, and it just turned off. What the heck? Um, so, yeah, just put it down, everything you want to happen in Act 1. Act one should is like obviously the first part of the book. Um, two, six. Act two in two to six paragraphs should drama, dra, drama should dramatize how the conflicts introduced in Act one lead to a crisis. So anyway, this is set for a screenplay, but I'm using this for a novel right now. So I'm gonna say so. Act two. You don't need to call it Act one. Act two in a novel. That's what they call it in. In the screenplay, I call it beginning, middle, and end. I mean, I still call it that in school because I'm a novelist becoming a screenwriter, but I'm always going to be a novelist first. So you want to get your beginning and then act two slash middle. You want to be at the crisis leading to it, what's going to happen. You just, you don't need full sentences even. Just choppy little things, everything you want to happen. And mainly, I find it's important just to keep track so you don't forget things because, let me tell you, trying to fit all of your book ideas in one brain all of a sudden it's which character is this and I and you're calling Alexis Aria and Michael Blair and you're like which who and that's what happens trust me um it's like when you're calling your kid the wrong name and then act two or middle I just have all the papers right here don't mind me if I could if I could figure out how to edit my videos I swear they would not be this bad and then seventh, act three slash end in one to three paragraphs. Dra dramatize the final conflict and resolution. I must have dramatized. I'm hanging around. I'm t I talk to a Canadian best friend too much. Um, dramatize the final conflict and resolution. So yes, um, also in the end slash act three, you need to get the climax, the false climax slash twist. Um, real climax if you're writing a r-rated book um anything you got to get that like twist and then the resolution and or cliffhanger if you are writing a book like that so that's what i would do so what I, what, if i was writing it i would get like false climax slash twist climax resolution cliffhanger that's just how i do it um everyone's different and then these are here are three things to ask yourself when you write your log line one, who is the main character and what does he or she want? Every character wants something. Two, who, villain, antagonist, or what is standing in the way way of the main character? Now, don't think, oh, my, my book doesn't have a villain. They do. Um, fragile? Is there a villain in Fragile? Absolutely. The girl's minds are the villain. Lila's bulimia is a villain. It's standing in the way for getting what she wants. Um, Annalise's her dad sexually abusing her her dad is the villain jenna suicide attempts her depression is the villain just because you're not writing a like disney fairy tale where there's a actual villain trying to kidnap the princess there's still a villain there um through baby's eyes the villain is hope's injury so yes there is a villain in everything and that in three 
what makes the story unique write that make sure that is clear in your notes um so those are what i am going to use from now on to plot my treatment slash outline because i think it is very very i am that was almost a fatal mistake with a candle um i think it is very necessary and i think that um i know when i start i oh know book 43 is already outlined what am i talking about when i start outlining book 44 i'm going to use that format for sure because it is just you guys don't even want to see wait i'm trying to think um Shaylin has seen my Finding Justice notes, so she can she can vouch for me, but you guys don't even want to see my Finding Justice notes. It is like, there's 60 pages of just jambled stuff everywhere. It's a mess. Yeah, she's seen it, and my mom has seen it, and I think that's it, but then both of them can vouch for me and say like, yeah, it's a hot mess in that folder. Um, she actually tried to help me organize my documents into folders. But we didn't get that far because I'm not that organized when it comes to writing. And you could literally, you could probably literally find a piece of paper in my apartment with just a character's name on it. Because I'm organized with everything in my life except that because it's kind of all over the place. Yeah, I mean you can see there's like nothing on my floor. I try and keep everything like up, on counters, this, that, beside that one piece of paper over there that's bothering me. But when it comes to writing, it's just, it's hard sometimes. Um, so I hope that would help you guys not make the same mistakes I did. If you're having trouble organizing your first or even your fifth or sixth, it's completely normal. And just because I'm talking about novels, you can be using this to write a play or a script. I'm just, I mean, this is for a script. I'm using it towards novels. I, I mean, writing is writing, I kind of feel like. Um... But I do have some bad habits as a novelist that I'm bringing over to a screenwriter. And it's obvious in class. It's like, oh my gosh. She, or like, they're like, no, this is not like writing a novel. And the, the teachers always call me out and we're like, and if you're writing a novel, Emma, because everyone knows at this point that I write books and um, some of the habits I need to break in order to write um, screenplays. So anyway, that is all for plotting your first novel book writing venture um i have a presentation in class tomorrow so i better wrap this up i hope this helps you guys and i will see you guys for my next video bye